So look who I'm with. This is the legend, Mike Massey. Oh my God, I can't believe it. And I'll tell you what, he plays guitar and sings <laughs> as good as he used to do trick well, shots and play porn and snooker. Check out Mike Massey, Reverb Nation. And my songs have been number one for six months now, on, regionally, on Reverb Nation country. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, for six months. There's my CD right there. Yeah. You get the... This one? Yeah. Go ahead, you can take them. Well, as soon as I'm... Here's the I CD, look. Sure, I'm out. Sharpie, you, you Sharpie, Sharpie and a Q, I like that. Yeah, you, you want to hear the song? Yeah, come on, do a song for us. Okay, for all my friends back home in England. Okay, this is called Sharpie and a Q. Yeah, yeah, I agree yeah people, they call me a legend. They put me in a billiards hall of fame. Pictures hanging on the wall. It's the greatest play the game. Yeah, it seems like people, they stop and want to talk to me all the time with a sharpie and a cue. They want me to sign. Now, if Jesus was here today, what would he do? If someone handed him a sharpie and asked him to sign their cue. When Jesus healed the blind man in Jerusalem that day Did they ask him for his autograph before he walked away? When Jesus healed a cripple that was crying out in pain Did they hand Jesus a sharpie and ask him to sign his name? Yeah, I walked through this world with a cue stick in my hand, talking about my Savior that died and rose again. And the greatest satisfaction is not from the autograph that I signed, it's when I put Jesus loves us always in front of mine. When Jesus healed the blind man in Jerusalem that day, did they ask him for his autograph before he walked away? When Jesus healed the cripple that was crying out in pain, did he hand Jesus a sharpie and ask him to sign his name? You know, Jesus, he turned the water into wine, took the darkness from the blind. If no one asked him for an autograph, why do they ask me for a man? Oh, how lovely is that? That Mike Massey, thank you so much, yeah, mate. Yeah. Thank you so much. That is brilliant. Well, thank you. Oh, God. Not only a great, great trick shotologist, <laughs> a great, great snooker play, mate. And what was your highest break? Well, I ran. I had three centuries one day in Canada. I was playing up there, and, and uh, but I had uh, uh, a '93 break in that master on the TV table, and I never had played on six for twelve. Very, very few times, you know, I played on six for twelve. I played uh, Jimmy White uh, in 1980. I was in Saudi Arabia, and I stopped off. I gambled at that time. And I stopped off in uh, England. They said they had some pool action there. Right. And I couldn't find a pool table except the English pool table. So I walk into this big, big bill snooker hall, and I said, is anybody in there gamble, you know, at, at pool? And they said, no, nah, but somebody had come in. So Jimmy comes bebopping in. This is before he turned pro. He's like 17 years old, you know. Yeah. He said, hey, man, you want to play some uh, some pool? You know, I mean, some snooker? I said, no, but I play some pool. He said, there's no pool tables. And there's one way back in the corner, you know. So we go back there, and we play nine ball, and I beat him. It was on a little, little, one of those little tables, you know. It's, yeah, but six then we three. went to Northampton the next day, and uh, 
he annihilated me on a snooker table. I had no chance at all. <laughs> and we became friends, though, but we, that's back when Wally West and Henry, that's when Henry West was the agent for some of the players. Yeah, yeah. I he remember. had his own room. We go over there, and Wally West was this barrel-chested, you know, guy and stuff. So we got over and I was doing trick shots, and they ended up, that Wally West and I ended up arm wrestling. You know, and I'm, you know, I'm pretty strong. This guy, yeah. he, he, he took a, a London book a London telephone phone directory, book. yeah. Phone um, book. Listen, to this. he took a London phone book, yeah. Tore it in half, yeah. Took the half and tore it in half. Took the quarters and ripped them in half. No, that's how strong he was. Wow. But he couldn't put me down arm wrestling. But I couldn't put him down either. <laughs> we, we got locked. Could, could, but could you tear a phone directory? Oh yeah, we would. And, <laughs> yeah. and the next time I saw Jimmy, he was like super famous. That was at the, the Masters there, you know. Yeah, he, yeah, Jimmy, yeah. You know, he, Jimmy was. And then Higgins, Higgins was a good friend. Higgins and I, but I traveled all over the world with uh, with uh, Steve Davis. We went to Africa a couple of times. I won the World Championships three times in snooker and trick shots, you know. Yeah. And uh, Steve and I made a, check this video out, the amazing duo of, Jim, of Steve Davis and Mike Massey. You know, we did an exhibition on our snooker table. Yeah. And we went to Australia. We played in Melinda Masters over there. And I had a 97 break playing billiards. I never played that before. Didn't billiards? Wow, it's a great game, isn't yeah, it? And I had a, we were going for 100, and I almost ran out. I had a 97 break. Wow. Eddie Charlton was a really good friend. Eddie Dennis Taylor, Charlton. Dennis Taylor, he's like one of the greatest stand-up comics there is. You know, I mean, you know he's really... Did he we tell went, you the nearly done joke? What's that? About the person, in the, the lady in the toilet. Are you well, nearly Willie done? Willie Thorne was one of my favorites. Too. Ah, Willie. See, I showed him the card trick, how to do that card trick on the table. Yeah, you know, where you right? land on the card. Yeah, Willie, I love Willie. Willie, Willie. And then, then uh, Doug Mountjoy. We, I played him in the seniors, you know, over there. Yeah. And he was, all those guys, you know. One, one day, uh, I'm over there, and we're going to play in the, the trick shot event, plus the, the seniors. And I get a phone call, and I couldn't understand a word he was saying. Francine said, you know, somebody invited us down for breakfast. We don't know who it was, and it was uh, Terry Griffiths, you know, because you couldn't oh, talk on the phone, yeah. I couldn't understand him. You know? I'm in the final now, you know. And Terry, he yeah, talks yeah. funny, doesn't he, Terry Griffiths? Yeah, Terry. <laughs> and, Great uh, coach, by the way, Terry Griffiths. And then Cliff Thorburn, you know. Gordon yeah, Thorburn, yeah. And then, uh, you know them all. You, oh, yeah. you should write a book. Yeah, well, I played in two of the Moscone Cups, too, you know. You know the I've, I've seen you in one where you played Alex and Jimmy. Well, yeah. They, they, I saw they, that. They I watched that they, the they, other day. You know why I haven't had them? Go on. We tied. That year, this is, Corey, the first year I played in the Moscone Cup, we tied. Yeah. They played a one-game playoff yeah. with Jimmy White and, and the Louboutin. Played a one-game. Louboutin, yeah. And Jimmy beat, beat Luke. And the next year we won, and I won a crucial match against Ronnie O'Sullivan, you know. Wow, you've, and, you've and, lived a life, haven't you? Well, I spent three weeks with Ronnie before he turned pro in Switzerland. We traveled all over Switzerland playing this stuff, you know. I've been to Europe 50 times. I've been to 40, 40, every conference up in Antarctica, you know, New Zealand, Russia many times, China, Kazakhstan, all over the year. Wow. How old are you now, Mike? I'll be 75 in April. 75. And wow. I'm still still winning some tournaments. Are you still playing? Well, I've won some tournaments on the small table the last few years. Wow. I beat this guy here. I beat, I beat Shane. Yeah, look, look, just to say, show who he's talking about, he's talking about Corey Jeweler over there. Yeah. The man that changed, tell you a story the man that changed break, hey, Corey, breaking forever. Corey, uh, i got to tell him a story about me and you, okay? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay, now <laughs> What is it? Corey and I was playing. It wasn't a real big tournament. It was a bar table tournament. Okay. Okay. Now, uh -huh. Corey and I was playing. In, around, Corey. Corey and I was oh playing boy, in semi. We, we were playing we in the semifinals. Semifinals. And I'm, gonna, I'm guessing I'm going to get the okay, second now, place it's, here. It's, <laughs> okay. Listen, it's Hill Hill, and it's my birthday. I said, Corey, you need to come up dry on the break for my birthday. And he came up dry on the break, and I ran out. Remember that? It, 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 oh yeah, I remember. <laughs> I remember. <laughs> I hit it. I hit it with a special, possibly dry break. Yeah. Break. It was a certain kind of yeah, break I did Corey, just for him on his birthday. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, Corey, special. everybody knows Corey's one of the greatest. I mean, he's one of the smartest players there is out there. Yeah, absolutely. He's, he's, yeah. he's a great, great player. I've known yeah. him. 
Now, Tori will remember this, too. I inspired him. Francine, I inspired him to win in Japan one year. He was so down on himself, playing Elfer Rays in the finals. And he was so down. Remember that? It, it, yeah. it, this is in Japan. Yeah. And you end up beating him. Yeah. You know, we, yeah. we, we, we gave you a pep talk. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, need a pep, I need a pep talk. <laughs> we gave him a pep talk. He beat the magician F. Ray's in the final event in Japan. You know. Do you remember the first time we've met? When, when you were 14, about 14, and that was at the round when, he won, when you won the juniors. It was the first time on that round table. I think I may have seen you before because you, it was in Philadelphia. You were at Petey's room doing an exhibition. You were yeah, doing maybe. the finger pool. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And I think I went up there to rack the balls. Oh, okay. For like yeah. a, one of the one of yeah, the players, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. And they said, "Hey, come in to rack the balls." And I, I stuck the balls in there. I went to try and get them real tight, and I pushed too hard, and they all popped up in the air. <laughs> well, you know, when I first started going to Europe, it was in the in the late seventies. And you couldn't find a pool table hardly in Germany unless it's a bar table in, in one of the, the, the bowling alleys or something. Yeah, yeah. And at that time, Sweden had the best pool players because Sweden was the first really country to start playing pool in, over in Europe. You know? Okay. You know, and uh, like, uh, you know, and now they got great players all over Europe. You know, I went over and talked to tra- Jürgen Mant Sandman's training camp twice. I taught training camps in Austria. You know, and, we can't uh, talk about European players when Corey's here. Oh, they're great. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they, they got. I was over uh, two year, for the European Championships uh, in Italy a couple of years Actually, ago. Actually, let, let me ask you a question while I've got you here. You, we've just had the 14 1 Championships, yeah. the American 14 1 Championships, uh, an all European domination again. Why is that? Well, Europe. <laughs> Europe, no, Europe, yeah, but in Europe they play more straight pool. Now they used to maybe more than they do in America now, you know, because they have their European, you know, they get, got the European Championships, you know, straight pool, you know. He's, I haven't upset Corey, have I? No, no, no. No. I but they've always see see in Europe they play they always play the European Championships and stuff, and they had these tournaments going. At one time, Oliver Orpman was considered probably the best straight pool player in, 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 in Europe at one time, Germany, you know. Yeah. And then Ralph, uh, I mean, uh, Thomas Inger ran a 492, you know. And, wow. Uh, What's yeah, your highest straight pool? I've run 200-something a couple of times, yeah. Do, do you think the 626, is it, will be ever be beaten? There's only... There's a few players I could see possibly could beat it if they really did, but it would going to take a lot of desire and everything. And but for him, just think about him. I mean, as you get up there, he's had eight four hundred somethings, you know. Yeah. And he just think about it, you have a good day, you run three hundred something, you stand the ball, something happens, stuff, you know. But to have the heart to do that, to keep doing that, you know, you try it two months in a row, you know. Yeah. And. I could see Thorsten has the ability to do it. Yeah. Filler has the ability yeah. to do it, you know. But for them to play all day long, you know, and shoot that and do that, you know. Now, when I was young, now I don't think I could have run to 626 and 26, but I have one record I wish somebody would try to break. And that's playing the Ghost 9 ball. Right. You know, I had 330 break and runs playing 9 ball playing in a 24 hour period. Yeah. Now, 320. Wow. Yeah, 320 break and runs, no combinations on the nine, no nine balls on break. Had to be clean runs. And that was in Austria, live TV and everything. That wasn't consecutive now. <laughs> it wasn't consecutive. No, no, no. But I had 330 break and runs. In 24 hours. Yeah, 330 break and runs, yeah. And that was in, in Austria. That was quite a few years ago. And, and I'm really proud of it because they said it helped Austria... See, at, at that time, the billiards was getting 90% of the money from the government, and pool was only getting like 10%. They said after I did that, they saw pool as a sport more, and they started... And now look people. at Albin Ocean. Yeah. Oh, yeah. From yeah, Austria, yeah. and also Jasmine. Yeah, Jasmine I, and Jasmine. now she's dancing. Have Jasmine. you ever been... A, would you go and dance with the stars? Well, I knew Jasmine <laughs> when she was this high, oh. running around the table, drawing her ball to foot. She was eight years old. I mean, really? Eight, yeah. Gerda, my first run of, of 217, was, it was I was playing Gerda in, in Sweden, and she had her high run on me at that time it was 58, you know, and oh. uh, Gerda Hofstetter, you know. Mike, yeah. you're a legend. Thank you so uh, much for talking to me. Yeah. Thank you so much. I'd rather be a legend in my own time than in my own mind. <laughs> <laughs>
You're a legend in all of our minds in the UK. Thank you very uh, the, much. Uh, Europe, I, I love doing that. Barry Hearn's been really great for the game and stuff, you know, his things and stuff. And uh, I used to I used to go over a lot, you know, but, you know, I'm older now. And see, the, this body, see the, the, see, the outer man, the outer man, you know what the outer man is? Yes. The outer man is your organs, your physical body, and everything. Yeah. Perishes day by day. But your soul and your spirit is going to live. Your soul is going to live forever. See, and Jesus has already took your death. That's the whole. So the message of the Bible is so simple that we were born sinners. We didn't choose, right? But we can be born again because of what He did on the cross. That's the sim simplicity of the cross. You know? Amen to that. Yeah. Thank you, Mike. Yeah. Been a pleasure. Yeah, thank thank you. you so much, mate. Get back on your guitar. <laughs> Go on, play us out with a little tune. Just okay. play us out with a little bit of music. I needed to escape from the hustle of the barroom. Lifestyle I'm built, killing me. Now everybody knew how good I was at pool. But the game was on. They could see. One night I closed my eyes. I thought that I was dying. In my dreams I found the open door. I finally entered in, forgiven of my sin. I was higher than I'd ever been before. Came upon the city, it glistened like the morning. Billion millionaires. In compared, yeah, everybody kind of smiled when I asked about a pool room. An angel took my hand and led me there. There were thousands of tables. I found that I was able to make any shot I would choose. We had to take turns, and very soon I learned in heaven it's impossible. To lose. <laughs> there were no neon lights, ain't nobody taking bites. Hey, that you box ain't gonna ever play the blues. Nobody plays the bet, they ain't nobody getting in debt. Cause in heaven it's impossible to lose. Yeah, I must have looked surprised. I saw friends that died. The old Charlie now, he was from the Folsom prison cell. This man there, he fried in the chair. I surely thought his soul was bound for hell. Uh -uh. He told me that the keeper of the city had forgiven him. His whole life passed away. He said I had to leave, but if I would truly believe, someday I can come again and stay. Thick and fast, hey, that you box ain't gonna ever play the blues. Nobody plays the bet, ain't nobody getting in debt. Cause in heaven it's impossible to lose. In heaven it's impossible.